Hello and welcome to Five Writers Five Minute Podcast, where five writers talk all about writing and share with you our top writing tips. This week, we are going to talk about character and how we come up with characters, how we build characters, how we make them rounded, what their function is in a story, how character drives plot, which is really important. Um, so we're going to talk all about characters, how we each work with character. My name is Sarah Armstrong. I'm Leanne Tanner. I'm Zanny Louise. I'm Deborah Abella. And I'm Tristan Banks. So Leanne, tell us how you work with character. Okay, I, I'll i often start with a fairly vague idea of character and then I'll go looking for pictures. So I use pictures a lot with character because uh, they help me imagine a little bit more about the character. I don't care all that much about stuff like hair colour or what mm -hmm. someone looks like unless, say, someone lives in a country where red hair is illegal, then yes. their red hair becomes really interesting. But I, I want to know the important things about them. I want to know the things that might get them into trouble. I want to know things like, is their heart open and ge generous or closed and frightened? Mm. Um, and which one of those two things would make the story more interesting? Beautiful. I want to know if they've got secrets because secrets always oh. make things more interesting. Yes. I really want to know what they're afraid of because if they're afraid of cats, at some point in the story, I am going to surround <laughs> them with a hundred cats and see Excellent. what they do. So I'm kind of I'm kind of developing the story and developing the character at the same time. You know, I don't I don't build this whole character before I start the story. Mm -hmm. That the character develops as the story develops. The two of them go together. Mainly because I'm trying to find out what's the most interesting direction to go in. And a lot of your characters have tales too, Lee. And do you ever <laughs> spend a lot of time thinking about what kind of tales they have? <laughs> they absolutely do have tails. I like tails on characters. I've always wanted a tail. I don't say so much with tails. <laughs> uh, I, I think that figuring out what they're afraid of is so oh, key. Yeah. I yeah. mean, it's all yeah. about making things difficult for them. And we've talked about trouble before, but of course, it's all about making life hard for our characters. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, Zanny, what about you? Oh, yes. Character is everything. And I don't sit down and plan it as such. So a lot like you, Leon, they're emerging on the page. So I have to write a scene to get to know the character and discover them. I think for me, I discover character largely through dialogue. So I, as quickly as possible, get my characters talking. Mm -hmm. and they do need someone to rub up against, so someone to sort of contrast with. So they've got a friend or a parent or someone who there's going to be a little bit of tension between them or, you know, just that their character gets to emerge. Uh, so, yeah, I'm just discovering them as as I go. I do sometimes go and find pictures that can help, but like you, I'm not that invested in how they specifically look. I often don't exactly know, which is sort of weird to think, isn't it, that you don't actually have a clear picture yeah. of what your character looks like because <clears throat> I'm much more interested in, like you, the heart and, and what they're yeah. going to do in every given situation. And I'm sort of... Not specifically basing it on people I know, but I'm I'm borrowing from little quirks from people I know. And I do feel like a character comes alive when the more specific those quirks are, uh, the more real the character is. So, yeah, I just let them develop um, and their name and things like that just come. You know, I don't I don't overthink it. I think that's a lovely way of putting it, too. I, I feel like when I first think of a character, it's like, you know, imagine you're at school and there's a new kid introduced to class and all you know about that kid literally is they're new to the class and physically what they look like. You don't know anything else, right? And then after a week, they might tell a few gags or you might sit next to them at lunchtime and they might tell you something about what they did on the weekend. And then after a month, of course, you know more. So I feel like my characters are like that. And by the end of that year, you are going to know that kid really well. You mm -hmm. might even be best friends mm. with that kid. And I feel like characters yeah. like that for me, I try to get to know them as much as I can beforehand. And exactly mm -hmm. like um, Leon and Danny said, what do they want? Mm -hmm. more than anything what would they do anything to protect like mm -hmm. what is that thing oh, that even yeah. if they're the nicest kindest person in the world what would you what would cross the line and yeah. make them furious if, if they lost <laughs> it if it was stolen yeah. um and I, I i think if you find out what that character loves more than anything yes. then you take it away from them or it's lost then the sparks will fly 
That's good. I really like that. The, these, this idea around fears and yeah. wants, I think mm-hmm. they're such good ways to, to form characters. And I also yeah. think um, I like to cast my characters as well. Like I like to think about who would play them in a movie <laughs> and sort of, and you know, some actors play all kinds of roles and you can't really <clears> pin <throat> them down, but yeah. a lot of actors have a certain type of role they play really well. Mm-hmm. And so just by casting that actor as this character, you and, and having a picture of it or a couple of pictures yes. really gives you a strong sense of, you know, when you think about the character and, and nobody else who ever reads the book might ever think that way or think of that particular actor, but you do and that's all that matters. Yeah. So I think casting is important. Mm. And I also yeah. think sharing character or developing characters in action. So that thing of wants yes. and that thing of conflicts and I, in a first draft, I have a very, very paper thin idea of who my character is. They might just have a name possibly, and that name might change throughout and they might say one thing and then another time they'll say something totally conflicting with that. And they're all over the place, but by about a third or fourth draft, I'm really starting to know who they are because they're revealing themselves in action by Mm. things that happen to them. They're saying things and doing things in reaction to that. And I find that that for me is the, is the best way perhaps to reveal a character than perhaps to have a really too solid an idea and then to sort of inflict that on the reader. Yeah. I think that's good to just be a little bit malleable. Yeah. Mm. Like, like you, I, um, my character is fairly thin in early drafts and and I'm okay with that now. I don't sort of panic. It's like I think mm. it's okay. I'll get to know them over time. They'll get more rounded. And the way I get to know them better is I'll often do character history, sort of mm. like on a separate yes. notebook on to one side and mm. often handwritten. Like I type my first draft, but I'll often do a handwritten character history. And it's just I'll just dance free right to any old question like favourite birthday party, worst yes. Christmas nice. present. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so worst time I hurt myself whatever it is and I often do write that in the first person from Mm. the character's point of view you know I uh and that really helps me get to know them it's amazing how often I'll use those little snippets in the story eventually yeah uh and the other thing I want to get clear early is like their voice like what they sound like when they're talking either to themselves in their head or out loud so it's almost like I just do a bit of free writing how I imagine they might write in their diary, for instance, or how yeah. how they talk to themselves about people around them. And yeah. that really helps me get to know them, that kind of way they talk, their voice. And um, absolutely, a lot of that free writing on the side is, you know, what do they want and why is it so important to them? Yeah. What mm. Mm. I did something once, Sarah, kind of similar. I I was about to pitch a novel idea to my publisher and I got my main character to write a letter to my publisher <laughs> telling her why that Forever. story needed to be told and it. why That's she so had this. Nice. Oh, my gosh. It was so good because it actually cleared some stuff up, like what she yeah. really wanted, Ooh. why she thought she should exist, why her story <laughs> should be told. And we it was. We should all do that. <laughs> it was. I. I I need to do it for every novel, I think. Is really yeah, cool. that's, that's very cool. Well, my, my yeah. editor sent me a postcard from my ca- written from my character. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's very cute. Very Thank cool. you, everyone. Yeah. That has yes. been so, I mean, I've actually taken things away from that. Yeah, you know, the, yeah. What do yeah. they want to protect? And yeah. mm. uh, like there's so Secrets. much in there, yeah. I think, for yeah. building character because character is fundamental to story, yes. not yeah. just because that's who the reader kind of um relates to in some way but the character drives the plot 100 mm. yes. uh, what they want drives the plot so yeah. uh, please join us again this is a podcast and a youtube thingy uh, <laughs> look forward to seeing you next time yep. see you everyone bye bye, bye. bye. bye.